Team ORCC is now five months into their seasons. In May's episode, we're going to check in with Brad as he takes on the Dirty Reaver. We're going to see how Matt gets on as he does what he does best and hunts down some Strava segments. Liam C makes a pretty diet mistake and I take on my second Enduro of the season. Let's see how we all got on. This month, I'm in Kilda, up in the north of England on the Scottish borders. I'm at Kilda Castle to take on one of the original UK gravel events, the Dirty Reaver. Now, the Dirty Reaver is so inclusive. It's got three different routes, run by a great bunch of people, and it's got something for everyone. A real festival vibe. You've got an event village on the Friday, and the Saturday is the big day. Beers, pizza, and a few cool brands for everyone to enjoy. I'm supposed to be here with Matt Page, but unfortunately couldn't make it. We were gonna do a comparison, against his Canyon Grail and my Canyon Lux. But it's just me with the mountain bike, full sus, XC setup, taking on the gravel races. I back myself, let's see how we get on. Oh well, thank you. Can you get 60K, Jesus Christ. Like the first 60K was intense. I've had time to decompress from the ride, not the race, the ride. And to be honest, it was a lovely day. I mean, the first 60K genuinely felt like a race. My heart rate hasn't been that high in a long time. And to be honest, I was kind of glad I dropped off the main group. Um, I could tell that the mountain bike probably wasn't the right bike for this. It, it genuinely is a gravel ride and you need a gravel bike if you want to be at the top end. If you want to just ride it, ride whatever bike you want. It's off-road, it's beautiful, the stunning scenery, and you can kind of take it at your own leisure. And that's what I managed to do once I was kind of part of ways with the front group. Um, the, there's a lot of climbing in the first part, so be prepared for that if you're doing a longer route, that is. Thinking about the bike, now I was on the Canyon Lux Trail and it was fine, it was good. Um, I mean, once there's, there's too much climbing to be competitive, for a bike like that, well, unless you just train harder and get better on the legs. But in all honesty, ride what you want because you'll be fine. But the Lux was great. I put the Goodyear Peaks on. It's the first time I've ridden properly on them and they felt fast, they felt fine. Good in the corners, good grip. And to be honest, it was quite fun descending because watching all the gravel riders be like quite sketchy, like, oh, I don't want to fall. And I was there just loving life, kind of smashing it down the descent. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. On the Karoo too. Now, there is no signal here. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Don't expect any signal to do anything. Poor planning on my part, I didn't load the route, but it doesn't matter. The, the route and the, the event organizers have mapped it out so perfectly. There's arrows everywhere to tell you where you need to go. And predictive climbing helped a lot. I could see exactly what climb was coming up. Even without the route loaded, it came up. So really impressed with that. And overall, it's been an amazing experience. I've absolutely loved my time at Dirty Reaver. I might come back on a gravel bike and try and be competitive. So hello from Wales and uh, this month for the team my focus has primarily been on training. I've been trying to put in more hours and uh, some more intensity work trying to get fitter for some races towards the end of the year. Uh, those have included some pretty big rides as well, one really challenging coast to coast. Not on the, not on the bike I got here, it was on a road bike, but still I've been putting the hours in and uh, trying to make myself faster. And after that, what I've decided to do is I want to give myself a challenge and I'm going to have a go at quite a long segment off-road and see how I'm doing and it should give me an idea of how I'm faring. The location I've chosen, this is Slimbriani behind me and there's a segment round here that goes all the way around the reservoir, it's seven kilometers in, in distance. Uh, it's mostly uphill, 200 meters of elevation, but there are some faster downhill sections and some nice corners along the way. My personal best is from eight years ago. So just 
despite riding this frequently, I haven't been faster in eight years. So I'm gonna try and see how close I can get to that. Uh, my personal best time on this is 19 minutes, I think. And the King of the Mountain is much faster, it's about 13. So uh, I'm not expecting to get close to that. It's a really competitive segment. There have been a thousand people who have ridden it. My current place is 65th, so quite a far down. I'm gonna see how far up that leaderboard I can get. Um, I'm gonna use the live segments on the crew and that should give me an idea of where I'm standing and how I'm doing. And uh, I've got a heart rate monitor on and that should give me an idea of effort and what might be left in the tank. So the segment starts on the, on the dam wall just below me. And yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot and see See how it goes and see see what shape I'm in. Just getting my breath back after the finish. Oh, I definitely put a big effort into that. And I'm uh, really pleased actually with the outcome. I was over three minutes faster than my PB. And it was 15 something, I think it's low 15s. Uh, it's about a minute, just over a minute outside the, the king of the mountain, but I'm gonna take that. It's the fastest I've done that section for a long, long time. Bike was ace, just flew up all the climbs um, and it was really good having a you can see your point on the elevation and you can see like wh where you're ahead and how far you're ahead or, or if you're ahead of both your PB and the king of the mountain and it'll also show your sort of arrival which I think is the fastest person that you're friends with um, on or follow rather not friends with follow on Strava and uh, yeah so that can be quite good for the competitive people and um, it's a feature I've really enjoyed and now onward to the rest of the ride. I think still got another 70k planned, so training continues. Well, I've come out to Salisbury Plain for my one gravel ride probably of this month and all say Liam is a moron because I've made a fatal error. I've got the new classified system on test and I haven't swapped the brake rotors over. So I've got no, no brake rotors on this bike and we've just started going and I was like, why can't I brake? Well, this is why. I'm very, very silly. Probably shouldn't ride any further, should we? No. No. Should probably go back to the car and just go to the pub. Beautiful day though, isn't it? Right, round two of Sol Enduro QECP. Um, this month for me, unfortunately, my training hasn't been as productive as I'd like it to be. Um, I've just been really busy at work, so it's been quite difficult to find a way of kind of fitting it in and keeping motivation. And unfortunately, the lack of motivation kind of reduces the mood. So when I have been riding, like I don't think I've been riding is maybe as positively as I could be. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm not getting the training in at all. So I'm still getting the bodyweight training in from Bennett Strength Factory. Um, and whenever I'm out on my normal rides, I'm trying to get intervals in and just trying a little bit harder. And over the past few months, I've perhaps ridden a place that I know maybe once or twice for the whole month. So everywhere else has been like bike parts and stuff that I've never ridden before. So when I've been doing that, I've been trying to um, like ride the trails as if I'm racing them and just trying to look up to see what's going on. Um, just had some changes to the bike. So we've got new Goodyear tires. They were released a couple of weeks ago. Um, so a lot of this month I've been trying to get used to those. 
um, so far so good. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they'll be like on the wet chalky stuff up here. Um, I've also put some clip pedals on, just, um, I've heard that it's quite pedally so I thought it'd be good to do that to just make use of all the power but it is quite wet this morning so I may well go back to class a bit later and I've put a longer drop post on the bike just to make it a little bit more or give you a bit more space over the bike. Um, Alright, I'll take a little bit of practice and see you in a bit. Alright, and stage one, practice, just think it's super easy to solve things. Uh, surprisingly grippy so far, oh, apart from that bit. A lot of line choice by the looks of it. Okay, so next south the roots are mega slippy at the moment. But it's surprising how quick that grip goes away. Let's take everything back like I said before. Alright, okay, stage two. Hopefully it's not quite as slippy as before. So yeah, when it comes to practice, I'm finding it quite useful just to go super slow. Yeah, it's not gonna be hard at race speed, I think, even though. No, there's not much too technical. It's going to be very hard to get to it. Okay, this is stage three. The bike is skipping around everywhere. Took some pressure out the front and I found it gripped a little bit better in stage two. Gotta remember this. That's rough. More pills, inside line start. So I think the name of the game here is just keep all of the flow. Keep the momentum going. That's alright. Yeah. Alright, I'm on stage. I saw on the map this one looks like it's gonna be the longest, but let's see how it goes. Oh, it's cool, it's nice. There we go. Is it drawing out? Jump. Park him up a bit. That's a shot. So the unspeakable has happened. The heavens have opened. Um, it's really, really rainy. It was slippy enough as it was, so now it's going to be even slippier. But, um, so like, the latter stages actually seem to work out really well. Um, stage, the stage is high, with a lot of fun. But yeah, there's a few things to look out for, so like, just line choice and off camber and places to pedal. Um, there was a big drop in stage five. I did go back to have a look at it, but I think I'm gonna give it a miss. Just, it's wet. Let's just leave it at that and just, damage limitation to see how it goes. Race plan, as it's raining, just try to stay on the wheels, try to stay rubber side down. Hopefully that'll give me a leg up. Got Chinese the other day and I was told in the fortune cookie that Sunday's my lucky day, so I'm gonna keep going on and hopefully that comes true. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. There's some talk of being cancelled, which would be a massive shame, but yeah, I'll let you know. Right, so that is QCP done. And I've come to you the day after because in this style of racing, so enduro at this level, you don't tend to get full results until much later in the day. You'll get first, second, and third um, straight away, but uh, when my provisional time says I'm sixth, I don't find it's worth waiting around unless I've got a mate who's looking like he's gonna get a podium. Um, so I went home early, and what this also allows is a good amount of time to reflect on the whole day so I can actually talk to you about this a little bit better than I would on the day. So what I've actually found quite funny and useful doing this and having a bit of time to reflect is that I can look over the GoPro footage and I can um, see where I've made mistakes and how I've made those exact same mistakes in the race run. So I need to go back and watch my GoPro footage or actually make a mental note of these mistakes and go back and try not to do one when it comes to racing. Anyway, I think the race actually went pretty well. So as you might have seen, it, it was torrential downpour come the end of the day and the trails changed massively. So there were big sections where it was off camber, 
there was um, just no grip. It's basically just brown, thick foam. And um, you just hang onto the bike and hoping to God that it just, it tracks. And luckily for the most part, it did for me. I managed to stay rubber down, so I kept on with the plan. I didn't fall off, which, um, which I think that helped me get 24th, which I'm really happy with. Um, it might not sound like much to good races, but um, considering I got 38th in the last race, I'm jumped up to 24th, I'm edging closer to my goal of a top 20, so that's great news. And um, so where I have done fairly little training in comparison to what I should be doing, what little training I have done has been super helpful. So throughout all of these really mucky and peddly stages, I was able to put the power down pretty consistently without fatiguing too much. Um, so that meant that I had energy to go harder for the next stage as well. Um, so that's definitely something to take note of when it comes to the drier races. Because things changed so much and because things got a lot wetter, I did see an awful lot of people were falling off and having trouble in these conditions. So again, I think managing to stay rubber side down was really useful um, in gaining me a half decent result. And the changes that I've made to the bike, um, I really like doing the clip pedals, um, especially on um, stages like um, yesterday's because um, your feet are always in one place. You're not like hunting for grip on your flat pedal. Um, and of course you can get much more power down a lot easier. But I did find that when it got proper muddy, they clocked up. Um, I should have changed back to flat, but because I'm a bit lazy and it was absolutely hammering it down and decided it was best not to. Well, I didn't even think about it to be honest. So again, something to think of next time. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, that was quite a positive race. Um, 24th, I'm happy with that. Um, hopefully we can bring it in for the next one. So for the next episode, I'm going to actually have a go at a bit of a downhill race um, at the Forest of Dean. They opened up all these like, one stage races. So I'm hoping that would help me keep the, my eye in. And yeah, I think the more you do it, um, the easier it would get. Um, we're going to follow the guys as they do Griff Fest, which was, um, it is a two day gravel event held by Matt Page. So I'm quite excited to see what happens there. And we'll also get updates from the man himself. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.